those days, um, soon after the Europeans uh, left, and even by the time they were here, the original plan of design, of uh, the original plan for Yaba was to be a road terminus, at the same time to be a recreational park. And at that time, I could still remember that even they used to create park where children can come, play, meet, sometimes they move around, they, you have a lot of nice trees, you have even the John Walker uh, clock that you see very near Presbyterian Church was then working, and uh, it used to be a place of fun for everybody to go and then relax and other things like that. But now things have changed. But what I just observe is that a lot of things must have actually related to this type of thing we are seeing. One is that the way the government actually is doing generally, it appears they lack continuity. Because we have cases where some government will come and plan Yaba very well. Other governments will come and change it. We have cases where we all know that most of the problems we have in Yaba started from this street, street trading, which is really on a very high rate as of now. And we have cases where as soon as they are sent packing, very soon you see them coming back. And this actually has disrupted the entire landscape of Yaba. Not only that, you have some illegal structures that are springing up. Many are having some kiosk there, many are having some cubicles, some are having uh, what do you call these uh, uh, porta cabins and other things that are there, which actually were not really meant, I mean, were not really what the area was meant for. And when you look at it, even the Tejosho Mall that was created very near the Yaba Park had a basic purpose of bringing a sort of modern marketing system into the area. But what do we see today? You see those who are just hawkers, those who are those who are walking around the main hawkers, those who are having shops and kiosks, disrupting the entire landscape to the point that even when you are there, you don't even you are even, even people are scared of going to buy things there when you look at the rate at which the uh, these uh, towels and pickpockets operate there. Yaba became notorious, and initially it used to be a very fine place where the place was designed, but now it's a different thing. Initially, what um, what were the main? The, the, we understand there was a park there. Yes. Like an open space. Even even the open space at that time used to be a center point, where uh, human rights activists used to converge, discuss with people, have people. I mean, they receive and then discuss with people to have their opinion about the views of the of the government. Sometimes they let the government, they let the people know what they are doing. It used to be a park where people meet. Tashwari in, uh, in, his, in his days had a lot of uh, meetings at that place. We have a lot of other people who are meeting. Even the early politicians in those days like uh, Babat Mokele and others, they were using the place as a rally point whereby they were sending information to the people and then they were having a lot of things to do with the people. But now nobody can even meet there except you are going to meet with the other boys. Um, have you thought of it? Some, it's full of thoughts recently. Is there, uh, there are the opinion that this problem is due to, it, it, um, it's applicable to Lagos generally. Lagos has a problem of overpopulation now. That research has even shown that the rate of population growth in Lagos states is like 10 times faster than Los Angeles, New York in the United States. I, do you... Really, I don't agree with that, for one thing. I know that there's increasing rate of people entering into Lagos all the time. But what I really know is that the government of the day should have been able to think ahead of this and plan for it. It's not only... I mean, if you say it's peculiar to Nigeria, maybe because of an even rate of development, it's possible to have that. But the actual thing is that no matter what happens, if government really plan for this, I'm sure they won't have the problem. And this is not the first time we've been having the influx of people into Lagos, though it's increasing. And why is it increasing? You have to look at it in the national perspective of the economic system. 
We have a problem with the way things are going on, that unemployment rate is increasing. So the youths are just leaving their schools from the interland and coming to the cities. We all know that is happening. But at the same time, this is the more reason why, because I used to say, even when I was in ministry, I, was, I used to say then, that there's need, the rate at which we should be planning in Lagos should be faster than what is being done in other parts of the country. Because of this peculiar, I agree that we have some peculiar problem in Lagos, but one thing I know is that if we're able to plan for it, we'll be able to handle it. Actually, this issue of unemployment and other things like that. Uh, now, you, you said earlier different models have come up, what can be done, whatever. What do you think can be done? Now, do you think the fact that now the government wants to make Yaba 21st century compliant to compete with other central parts in the, the so called developed countries? Do you think this can be achieved? And what can be done as a town planner now? As do we do, um, should the government divert the, the coming vehicles? You know, what can be done now? Really, there are so many areas or scenarios to, to which we can actually handle that. Uh, later, as I, I mean, as you will see later, we, there are students that have done a lot of work, there are graduate students and PGs that have done a lot of work in that area, likewise some lecturers. They will give, let you have various options so that you can really see various ways by which the area can be put into. Well, it's a nice thing that they want to make it 21st century compliant like other central parks in the developed part of the world is achievable. It's only, it involves a lot of things. For instance, I know that even no matter the situation or no matter the thing government wants to do there, we should not really undermine this area boy syndrome. Let me give you an instance. Recently, there was a the arbitration of a bad beach was to be done, and uh, somewhere in Marina, I think like last year or so, uh, within the last few years, as they were, as the conductors who was who actually was trying to plant the the flower, were, were, as soon as they were doing it, the area boys came to them and said, "Ah wow, Tijen." the flower that is we have not eaten and you are trying to beautify the environment so they were disrupting them then making them to be packing with money or things like that so really i know that it's possible to do it i mean government can do their own part but at the same time we should actually think about this area boy syndrome because it's becoming it's be, we just discussed it today at our meeting that is even they're affecting the property in central lagos Many people are even moving out of Central Lagos. Many people are moving out of Central Lagos because of this Arab boy syndrome. So that thing is really, when you look at Yaba, it happens to be that it's one of their centers in this Lagos. So no matter the effort government wants to do, if they are not taken care of in form of certain ways of economic empowerment or other things that will make them to really be better engaged, I'm sure no matter the effort government is trying to put there, it's likely to still be supported by the effort of these people. That is one. Then two, let's now go to the technical aspect of it. There are ways by which the areas can be redesigned, as we see later. We could have, for instance, it depends, before we can even talk of the planning of the area. I learned recently from the news that the Prince administration of uh, Governor Bola Tinubu wants to really uh, wake up the issue of the metro line. If that is done, that would be fantastic. In that case, the new development part of the Yaba can I follow, or can I, can, can, can follow a suit, or can be more or less married with whatever they want to do as regards the metro line in that area because I'm, I'm aware when I was in the ministry that uh, the dumping ground which is behind the presidential church used to be, I mean well, it was then proposed to be the collecting point of the first phase of the scheme which was to take place, one was to take off from Abu Lekba, pass through um, uh, Agidimbi Road then pass through Doati Road at Oregon Estate, then it will wait and collect at where you have the present dump site behind Total or at the toll gate. Well, another one we're supposed to start from where we have this Ode um, Onyori Maitatin, then also to meet there. From there, they will now move through Ikorodu Road down to Yaba behind that particular show before they now take off to finally empty their passengers at Marina. That was the first phase. I was aware of that when I was in the ministry. So the way, if that one is to be done now, I think the plan of the government as regards the, the area can be done in harmony, in harmony with the one they want to do for the metro line so that there won't be any conflict of use or interest or anything that will be working against each other, that as it may. Then, on his own part, 
For instance, there's a way when you look at Yaba now, it's more or less a traffic bottleneck. And uh, we have done a lot of research work as regards the the movements of the traffic, the people, the real people.
always a pleasure meeting with you. The name is Ade Ade Dukun. My background is in architecture and um, urban planning. And I've been teaching in this university for some two decades in both architecture and planning. Yes. In other words, you're a town planner. Uh, an architect and planner. Uh, the word town planner. Uh, Lagos is a city, for example, and there's also a, an element of rural planning. So you just say planning. We are all planners. But then there's a physical planning, if that is the sense, in which cities are planned or organized for efficient use or management. Okay. As a, um, I'm sure as a planner, and you've been in Lagos for some time, I'm sure you are familiar with the landscape, what Lagos used to be. Can you tell us briefly what Yaba Terminal was before it is now? Okay, just use the word terminal. Uh, Yaba played a predominantly role, is still playing a predominantly role as a center of activity, a nodal activity, an interchange for commuters, for intra and intercity um, vehicular movement. Because at Yaba you can get buses to virtually every part of the city. D2, you can also get buses to other parts of the country, particularly in the southwest from Yaba. So Yaba functions or, or performs a role as both a nodal center being commercial to Lagos, and then it's an interchange, the first point of accessing Lagos by a lot of people from the outside, like I said, you know, particularly from the southwest, the Biden, and even part of um, Edo Delta states. Okay. Apart from Yaba being, um, having certain, apart from Yaba being a terminal, it's from history, we, we know that it's been used as an open, um, the open space has been used for activities by activists. Yeah. Who have at one time kicked against um, unfavorable, unfavorable policies of the government and everything. Now this space mm. is no more there. It's there, but it's been diverted. It's been used for something else. Can you tell us the reasons why Yaba is in this state now? Yaba, yeah, like every part of the city, is in a state of distress. Lagos lacks open spaces recreation areas, parks, places of uh, meeting, places of interest. There's virtually no open space left for pedestrians in Lagos, whether organized or unorganized. Yeah, yeah, there used to be one of such centers where during the Nadeko era, the all kinds of pro-democracy, even the student uh, days, you know, in the in the late 60s and uh, early 70s, this was a meeting point, you know, for the public to you know hold discussions, to press a point, to make uh, their views known, you know, to the government. It's um, popular with uh, the statue of the man you see there now, you know, the late Dr. Tai Shulani. Uh, but of course, it will be difficult to hold a rally in uh, Yaba now, as you can see that it's all taken over by commercial activities, you know, by transportation activities. And um, it's a shame that a valuable, usable open space like that has been turned into a highly commercialized space where pedestrians are not free, you have to watch your shoulder, you know, passing through it, it is highly militarized, there are too many people in uniform, all kinds of task forces at Yaba. In fact, you get to Yaba without knowing that you are Yaba except for the noise, except for the conflicts of uses, conflicts in the sense that you have too many things. There's only one major medical research institution in this country. You know it's situated in that place? There's a central medical library, you know, it's situated there. The psychiatric hospital has an entrance, you know, into that place. There's a beautiful Presbyterian church. 
We also have a nursery school, the International Women's School Nursery School. A lot of these activities are dwarfed just by the immense number of people, you know, that uh, troops into that place at every time of day. In fact, there's no non-busy hour for Yaba. You can talk about peak and off-peak periods. Every time is, is a peak period. It's not like where you will tell people, oh, I want to meet you, let's meet there. There are no, you know, shelters for those buses. Um, you can't find your way without asking questions. At night, Yaba is not illuminated. It's, it's, it becomes a ghost place. It could be even a trap if you are not if you are not sure, you know, uh, about where you are. I don't know whether that's what you mean. Yeah. Um, what, 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 are the, what do you think are the reasons for this problem in Yaba now? The reasons for Yaba is the same everywhere. A lot of what we may refer to as uh, public spaces have been taken over by other uses. What we mean by public spaces are those informal places where people should gather to meet, to recreate. First of all, this was more of a white man's inven invention, you know, the colonial idea. You know in the Koyi there used to be Koyi Park. So when the uh, mainland was created more for the uh, black workers who are not in GRE of um, Ikoi, for example, the railway workers. There's also, it's an area for gathering. But over the years, uh, what do you find there? Uh, recently, the government was concerned about uh, slow moving of traffic there. They carried out a lot of road improvement. But uh, it seems like those uh, improvement carried out was to assist the, uh, the traders. Okay, they are there on the road, uh, but uh, half the time you can't blame the traders because I know some of the government officials do collect uh, money from the users. Uh, the, the, the places are partitioned, whether they call them clay, clay shops, uh, where, you know, it's not really a closed shop, you know, it's, a, 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 it's like a gang thing, and uh, you'll be afraid to walk doing shopping in some of those places, but I think Lagosians are, you know, comfortable with that. Uh, there's open door shopping. Nothing is wrong with open door shopping, even in the developed countries. You can have a place that opens to just pedestrian activities alone, what we call, you know, pedestrianized shopping. Or it could be a mall. Or, you know, you could have a situation where there will be differentiation of um, movement. Whereas maybe it's the pedestrians on the ground level and then your vehicles are at the upper level, that kind of thing, you know. I mean, if you think about Madison Square Garden in New York, the Port Authority Terminal, the, uh, the Terminal Center, you know, um, on its, uh, its Avenue uh, in New York, where they have these uh, buses, you know, going into all parts of the U.S. It's all one space, but because it's multi-level, it makes it possible you know, to use that one space for all kinds of um, activities. But when I take so, I mean, in Nigeria, and it is stronger now, maybe the shoppers are the strongest. And of course, the Danfo boys. Most people will not like to pass through Yaba. And of course, if uh, it is possible to uh, create a, a hierarchy of spaces, if it is possible to keep create a hierarchy of um, design, we can get into a situation where people going to Uyibo, for example, who have no reason to be at Yaba, I mean, by just introducing a clover leaf, an elevated bridge, so they don't have to come there. During rush hours, Yaba is a, it's a big, big trouble, it's a big, big mess. Uh, studies have been carried out between certain hours of the day as to, you know, the vehicular movement, the taxis, the private vehicles, the downfalls and the moldways. Some of these things are the hindrances, you know, that leads to the inefficiency of Yaba as a terminal. I mean, if you are to look at it as being a terminal, if you are to look at it purely from recreational viewpoints, I mean, it has lost that. 
Okay, but it is not impossible to recreate, you know, such a space. And of course, the other is not isolated when it comes to that. A lot of places in Lagos are crying for a redirection because our people don't have a place to recreate. Neighborhoods don't have a park. You say mainland local government, except for Mobile IG Road Sports Park, uh, where kids, you know, get to play that sort of thing organized. There's virtually nowhere in Lagos. Then again, sometimes they do use the University of Lagos waterfront during festivals or Ilea or Christmas time. But that need not be the case. If we take proper care of the little things we have, which Yaba represents. Okay, so what do you think? What do you think the government can impact on to improve Yaba? Maybe traffic or something? Oh, well, it's a comprehensive design. There's something we call in design, we say urban design. Urban design refers to that active area of a city which needs improvement. Usually, it's a private-public kind of cooperation. And of course, the best way to do it is like to have maybe a think tank group, you know, to look precisely at the nature of the problem at Yaba. Who uses it? I mean, traders, commuters, huh? you also have the workers, you have the railway uh, there, you also have the Joshu market. Who patronizes these areas? What hours of day, you know, uh, some, you know is at uh, peak hours, for example. Obviously, one of the best things, easiest, would be say to hey, direct the traffic. Huh? That could be easy, but it's already a one-way traffic anyways you know, coming from uh, Jibou side towards Uyimbo. So you could say, well, I mean, that's not the way, because if it's a already a one-way traffic, could we also say, could we close it down at certain t hours of the day, you know, make it pedestrian where there could be food vendors, where, you know, there could be bands playing. I mean, let's create some ex excitement in this city, you know, where I will be free, you know, to be free of all these uh, vehicular people and I can meet with you, let's provide some shade, some shelter. So it's, uh, it has to be studied, but it can be done, okay, on the various levels. I mean, for example, studies have been carried out by students here, you know, as to alternative views, you know, diversion of routes, for example. Like the road going to Ujo Elegba, could it be bypassed through the LTV, is it NTA? around the behind the Joshua market, you know, pick up at the local uh, railway station, for example, so that you have a lot of people who have nothing to do coming to that junction, the T-junction on Nujo Elegba Road and Yaba. I mean, this is a... Uh, it's not Bonoway. Maybe it's Bonoway. It's, it's Bonoway. Once you leave Yaba, it's Bonoway. You know, it's about the railway track, okay? that whole area read redesigning and of course you know there's an active residential component uh in that place this area around binding okay and you also know that between Tejo show the market and the other area you do have a lot of uh, people in fact recently i carried out a a, a, a survey there i was looking at churches so um, public buildings now churches you won't believe that between Tejo, Shu, and Ayaba, that whole area, you have about 30 churches. Good. What it means is that when they have their prayers, etc., etc., whether it's in the evening or whatever, you have influx of people. Of course, it's also an area that never really sleeps. Uh, during the, on Sundays, so really Baptist churches nearby, you have the Presbyterian church, those ones are the big churches. You have the also uh, African uh, uh, there's also that African church. He holds of them. So that means it is a beehive. An active area is good for city's economic base. If it is well planned, improved upon, because that, that, that when we talk about tax base, a place where almost on a daily basis, on a whatever basis, you can make money. But it has to be secured, it has to be well designed, and of course, the issue of lighting, I highlighted earlier that in the evening, as active as this place is, it is dead. And uh, mind you, I talk about co commuters. 
when they are coming back in the evenings, where do they buy meat, vegetables? On the road. Eh? At the railway crossing and on the way to Joyleba. Ask anybody. That was uh, everybody coming to from Lagos. Once they disembark to join all those rural little buses, they do their shopping there. So it is active. You do not drive businesses away, but things must be done in an efficient manner. It must be well handled. And if design is reasonable, you know, it will be better for everybody. So we should not be talking about Yaba alone. I mean, places in the Keja, which we call Noda areas or multi-nuclear, you know, centers, that is where you can get things without necessarily going to Balog or uh, Broad Street in Lagos or to Obafemi Awolowe because it is closer and uh, a lot of people uses it. Okay. So what other things do you think can be put in place to make Yamba area a tourist center? No, you have to start first replanning, redesigning, and that is, I don't have the magic wand or, you know, the answer to all. It has to take business interests, design groups, construction groups, the users, you know, those commuters. In fact, um, where do you put the buses? They have a union. Where should they go to? Do you want a, a, a bus stop that is uh, moved away before you get there so that they disembark and it all becomes pedestrianized and after that, you know, you can join other buses or you go on a different level, you can pick buses, you know, going to your, uh, your destination. And perhaps while you are doing that, you are doing your shopping as well. The problem is that uh, people, for the most part, don't like to enter shops. To we are used to buying things on the road because we are basically a Jaba kind of people. Uh, everybody displays their wares on the road, and it's easier for us to pick up. So there's going to be reorientation of the use of the users. So we have to change if we have to compete, not just globally. At least to be sufficient, you know within Lagos mainland. Thank you, sir. You are welcome. Good afternoon. 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 As the former governor of Lagos, yes. would like to have your opinion on the state of the present Yaba terminus. What Yaba terminus was before? What was the state of Yaba terminus for in Lagos before now? Before now, that place was a terminus for several commercial buses. We foresaw that it was going to be in the service state if development did not take place. As it is now, chaos is a word for it. And as I see it, it will be getting worse and worse unless the government this the situation. We planned to have a metro line system throughout the Gulf State. That system is an imperative for the Gulf State. Whether it is done 